What's going on, people? It's Mr. Back again. And yes, I've got a special guest, and I don't even need to introduce this guy. The guy, man himself, Kevin Campbell. How are you doing? Mr. Doe, I'm good. I'm good. Nice to, to join you on the Forest Pod. And it's a pity we couldn't do it before the first game of the season. Yeah. But at least we've got a bit to talk about after the, the two games have gone. So, it's so, interesting. Look, so, so much to talk about, Kevin. Uh, but like, if, if people want to ask Kevin Campbell some questions, um, link below. There's going to be a few people come on as well. Like I said, Kevin Campbell, if no one knows who Kevin Campbell is, Kevin Campbell was the last person to get Nottingham Forest promoted. And as everyone knows, Forest, Forest they've, they've had so much strikers and we still not got promoted. And Kevin Campbell is the decent man to come on my channel and talk about Forest and Strike Force. His experience as well, like he played up front with Pierre Van Hooydonk, the team that he played with as well. So Kevin, Let's talk about you know Chris Hooter. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's okay. had so much problems. Like he's he's been there for a year and a half now, and he needs he needs a strike. We've got Lewis Grabbin and Lyle Taylor up front. Tell him, tell everyone, what does Chris Hooter need to do to get Forrest promoted? I think the, the the key is to for both of those strikers. I think both of the strikers are capable. Lewis Grabbin could score pretty regularly. I think Taylor is a is a is a is a good striker, but it all comes down to surface. Yeah, service matters, and both of those players don't need both of them, they're different players. So Taylor needs player needs service like what Johnson Brennan Johnson provided. Yeah, fantastic run, broke the line. Taylor, as soon as he he, he saw Johnson beat his man, he peeled off, and he knew yeah. what was coming. What a fantastic goal to go 1-0 up. Brilliant play. Luce Grabben's a bit different. He's a bit cuter in and around the box. Knows his way around the box a, a, a bit more. So you have to be able to utilise those strikers. Whoever plays, if it's both of them, that might weaken the team elsewhere. So you might play one of them at a time, but you've got to supply that one striker with the balls he needs. And if you create, if you create enough chances for these guys, I think they I think they would they would do the business. But the issue is, I always say this, not in a forest issue would always be you've got to get the back four right and yeah. you've got to get that balance in midfield right because there's good players there. Joe Lolly is got you've got players with quality. I think Joe Lolly's a, a fantastic player. People often say to me, could he play higher? I think he could play higher, but he'd love to do that with Nottingham Forest. Mm. But it's to get the right balance, balance because quality is there. Brennan Johnson, I've been impressed with that young man. Yeah. I've got to say, I've been impressed with him. But again, it all comes down to if you could supply your strikers, you're in with a chance. Mm. A quick question, Kim. Like I said, uh, like, you, you played up front with Pierre van Hooydonk, and in this area now, look, there's always one up front. What, what would you prefer? Like, would you prefer to be with someone or like, would you like to be uh, open by yourself? What do you prefer? Uh, I, I like to play with a, with a strike partner. I think the, the key to everything now is one of the strikers have to drop a little bit deeper mm. to help the midfield out because the way teams set up these days, you know, they, they, they try to overload the midfield. Mm. But we played two up top and, and most of the time, Pierre Van Oudon done that naturally anyway. So yeah. that allowed me to stay on the shoulder of the, of, of the centre-half. Mm. So that kind of fitted in with how we played anyway. I think more modern day now, people are looking at a number 10. Trying yeah. to get a number 10 in there who, whose instinct probably isn't to score goals. His instinct is probably just, just to create. But if you're not going to play with two strikers, your number 10 has to score goals. Mm. Now, I think the, the problem is, like I said, um, as you know, Chris Hooton, he's, he's any, any forest manager that comes to the club is going to be under pressure. And Chris Hooton, you said Lyle Taylor and Lewis Grabbin, he, Hooton, he always plays one up front. Mm -hmm. do you, Chris Hooton, do you think this season he's under pressure or do you think he needs time? Like, for, for, like me personally, I think as, a, as any forest manager, it's like a graveyard. You're always going to be in trouble with the fan base that we've got, the expectation that we need. How how long do you think Chris Hooter needs to get like Forest promoted? 
I, I, honestly, I I think he needs probably about 20, 18 to 24 months to really get this, this team together. Mm. I, I'll tell you the reason why. There's been, there's been quite a bit of turnover in personnel and you've got some really good youngsters coming up as well. Yeah. Okay? For the youngsters to start making that transition to be first team players mm. and for the, the newbies to settle into the city, to settle into the team, etc. That could take anywhere between six to 12 months. Once that happens, I believe then you're going to have an opportunity to push forward with this team. Because I, I just don't think you're quite right yet. Mm. You've got quality at Nottingham Forest, definite qualities there. But I think the Coventry game kind of summed up how Nottingham Forest are. Great first goal. You, you start the game pretty well, score a really good goal, and you look in the ascendancy. Second half comes, Coventry start putting you under pressure, and next minute you can't get out. Yeah. And they just keep coming and coming and coming. So, you know, again, Chris Hewton is... is the pressure is going to be there because not the forest just because of the name alone. Exactly, exactly. The name alone is going to bring pressure. But one thing I do know about not the forest, the, the the fan base are very knowledgeable. They know their football, and not to say that they don't give managers time. They do give managers time. You give managers time if you start to see progress. If you start to see things starting to progress, then you'll give it a bit of time. If things don't progress, then obviously, you know, what would happen is people start questioning the manager. Yeah. And once that happens, as you said, it's a graveyard. So Chris Hewton needs a, a few wins under his belt just to settle everything down. And it was, a, well, it was a good win last night, wasn't it? So, well, it was, it was a great win. Well, you, you, know what? Like you mentioned, you mentioned Brendan Johnson. Like, I don't know if you know, know Kev, he's been, he's been linked away with um, the top premiership clubs. He, um, he was on loan at um, Lincoln. Last season, as as a player yourself, like I said, when you're in your young age, like when you're playing fantastic, don't sometimes your head gets turned sometimes with, with now the, the time with the, the agents like move. What's the for Brent Johnson? He's ninety. I think he's twenty years old. Do you think that Brent Johnson should have one more season with Forest, or do you think it's time to move to Premier League? Listen, he needs it. He, if he if he goes to a Premier League team, let's just say in this window he goes to a Premier League team. Yeah, he's not going to play, Mister Door. He's not going to play. Mm. The best thing for Brendan Johnson is to play football at Nottingham Forest. He's comfortable there. He's settled. You could see his game. He's got the game. The players trust him. One, two seasons, build because he's a young man, gifted young man, very talented. Play at Nottingham Forest. See if you can get it. A year, two years. Try and help them get to where they need to get to, because with that talent, it's only gonna his, his stock is only gonna rise. Hundred percent, five percent. Um, right, we're gonna we've got, um ask a question for you, Kevin. Um, mm -hmm. I've got someone called Des Oldham. He's got he's a YouTuber as well. So, so Des can come in, give you one uh, question to you. I need to bring him now. Hello, Des. Hi, Ben. Hi, Kev. Hi, Des. You're right. I'm good, thanks. How are you today? <laughs> I'm very good, thanks, mate. Looking forward to these questions. <laughs> go, go ahead, Des. Yeah, so uh, you were talking about the Coventry game there, and obviously it brings back memories for for us of your your hat trick. Do you know what I mean? First game of the play? season. First game of the season. <laughs> I was there that day. I remember it was the first game after the Euros actually in England. It was a bright sunny day, and I was just wondering. Um, of course, that's going to be a memory for you. And then there was the Norwich. The Norwich game, I remember as well. Do you know when when you scored that goal in the top corner? But yeah. one one thing that really sticks out for me, one game when I think of yourself as a Forest player, was the the Reading away game. Um, oh, yeah, chief, free all, free all, and 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 the goal that I really enjoyed the most that you scored was the one where you flicked it on and and, and got my own flick on. Went onto your own flick on and and you use the outside of your foot and put it in the bottom corner. I think that was a, a brilliant goal and it really gets mentioned. I just wondered what were your sort of recollections of that game? Do you know, there, there was lots happening. I remember walking away from the stadium and we was all moaning because Stoney had missed that, that, that sitter that gets shown all the time. Yeah. 
there's it was a, it was look we were our tails were up we were we were in the ascendancy and we we knew we could beat Reading so it was just a matter of let's get out there let's not give anything away and you know Pierre and myself will, will do the business well Pierre done the business I done the business I don't think you'll ever see a striker get his own flick on I've and put it in the net without a defender touching it. That's the other thing. A defender didn't even touch it. I flicked no. it on. I got my flick on and put it in the net. So we, we were cruising. And I think at the time we were 3-1 up. And then, if you remember rightly, Dave Besson got sent off. The referee, yeah. yes, the referee decided he's going to be the star, Des. And, and I think that that's what put us on our back foot. Chet's went in goal, didn't he? Yeah, I think yeah. Chet's winning goal, and they, I think Limvoy Primer scored or, or or whatever happened to make it free all. And you leave there, we got a point, but it felt like a defeat. Yeah, it felt yeah. like a defeat for us. And I'll never forget after the game, Dave uh, Bassett said to us, he said, lads, it's a good point. And we were like, Gaffer, <laughs> we've thrown away two points here. You know, we should have we should have got the points here. And he was just saying, listen, it's the championship. Crazy things happen in this league. And anytime you're away from home, if you could pick up whatever you pick up away from home, you pick it up. And, you know, we didn't feel any better, but it was a good point because, you know, that point in the end helped us get to where we needed to get to this. No, and, and that goal, like, like you said, I, I never forget that. And it never gets mentioned. I, I, I've never seen anybody run onto their own flick on. And I was right <laughs> behind it. And, and you bent it just outside the post. Can yeah. you remember your celebration, Daz? Can you remember your cele celebration? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was all the Forest fans were behind that goal, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All yeah, the yeah. Forest girl, And I think I jumped and went, or oh, something <laughs> like that. Something yeah. like that. I, I can't even remember it's such a long time, but I think I've done something like that. So... <laughs> That, seeing the away fans, because, you know, last season, obviously, there was no home fans in yeah. for, for you guys. It was It's very difficult. But when the fans are there, the fans add to so much to the game, guys. You fans oh, add so brilliant. much to the game. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, Des, you got any more, any more questions, Des, before I get to someone else on? No, I just, I just want to say... Um... When I watched you and Mr. Daw, I said it to him earlier in the in the lockdown. When I watched you two guys, it was just brilliant. It, there was so much enthusiasm. Um, it really made me smile. Obviously, when things were rubbish, you know, you guys yeah. just loving loving chatting about football. I really enjoyed that episode. Well, so, that, well done, guys. Thanks, Des. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, for Des. the question. Good question. Cheers, Des. Thank you very much for that, Des. I'll, 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 I'll see you soon, Des. See you soon. See you soon, Ben. Cheers, Des. Cheers, Thank bye. You. Right, uh, next one. Oh, I've got my friend Marcus Neves. He's a he's an Arsenal fan, and Kev, this guy, it gives me grief every single time. This <laughs> about guy. what? What's he give you grief <laughs> oh, about? Dude, we'll, we'll bring him in. We'll bring him in. Marcus Neves, yeah, how you doing? Good, gents. First of all, though, pick up yourself. I know you've got a bit more bass in your voice after last night's win. King Kevin Campbell, honestly, I, I mean this like from the bottom of my heart. The way you interact with fans, not just the Forest and Arsenal in general, it's to be commended. And it kind of leads me on to my question slightly. It's a bit of a loaded question. There's a bit of a story to go with hey, it. Hey, 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 behave yourself here. What's going on? Load this. <laughs> Don't load these questions on me. <laughs> um, just a bit of a backstory. I'm a Nottingham lad. Um, obviously, I support Arsenal. And the reason why I support Arsenal, it's a, long, it's a long story, I'll cut it down, is to follow a player. Now, as a child um, in the 90s, lots of world-class strikers, lots of great strikers in the Premier League. I had two. Andy Cole and Ian Wright, okay? Andy Cole broke my heart, um, moved to Manchester United. That couldn't happen. So Arsenal then kind of became my love because I followed a player, Ian Wright. Represented so much, as you can imagine, during those times. Yourself as well, which is why it's mad to be speaking to you in this format. So my question is, kind of goes along like this. Do you feel that we as fans perhaps invest a bit too much time and expectation are modern day footballers. Is it a, just a job for them, or should we expect them to give us a bit more in terms of interacting with fans, caring about the club? We've seen with Lionel Messi, he's dropped Barcelona to move on. Do we expect too much, do you think, out of a modern day footballer? Uh, a good question. No, I don't think you expect too much, but there's only so much when you're playing you can give because what you what you what you have to do, you have to manage. 
your fan interaction. Fair enough, you, 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 because remember, back in the day, social media wasn't really there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and when social media is not there, your access to the players is different. Now, because people are talking about football, and you could talk football 24-7 on the social media, it's great. You could watch these, these series. You know, back in the day, you didn't have anything like this. Mm -hmm. But the players do watch stuff. They do take it in. But the interaction, because you've got a game, you open yourself out to interact too much. And you're going to be in trouble because you know things could get toxic very quick. Mm -hmm. And for all the good that comes with interacting, 10 times bad could come with a bad result. So players just have to be very careful. But fans, listen, fans have, for me, fans have to try and be positive and expect their teams to win. They want Mr. Dorr, for instance, he wants Nottingham Forest to get it back in the Premiership. Yep. Not enough for us the big name in, 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 in the championship. Need to get back to where they belong. Every fan believes that. Arsenal need to get back to where they belong challenging. And when it doesn't happen, fans feel let down. Yeah. That's just the, that, the names that come with these clubs and the history that comes with these clubs. That's what's propelling these football clubs and, and footballers. So when players come into the club who don't do the business, fans have a right to say, hold on a minute. It's not good enough. It is not good enough. So I, I hope I answered your, your question there. You have, Kev. Okay, sorry. I've got a bit of a follow-up, if that's okay. Just going back to oh, childhood. Oh, that's um, the loaded pit, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. You've answered a bit perfectly, which I needed. Um, as a child growing up in Nottingham, the Forest players, even without social media, seemed so accessible. So yeah. Darren Huckabee, I know he wasn't a Forest player as such, came into local primary school to talk to the children. I remember going to a football tournament um, at the city ground. Colin Cooper was there to hand out medals and trophies. Quick story, true story as well. And Dor can vouch for it because he was there. A few years ago, probably three now, um, me and Mr. Dor went for a drink around town. A um, couple steady ones, nothing too crazy. And, um, I, drink, I, drink, I drink this. Don't talk, not, don't talk lies, Marcus, you know. No, you're right, you can't drink. There's a difference, you can't drink. <laughs> we had a couple of steady ones, and we're walking down Columbus Street, um, probably the busiest street in Nottingham. Um, a Forest footballer um, at the time, doesn't play for them anymore, was walking with his dog, right? Only one head on Columbus Street turned around. Door. None of, myself included, I'm a football fan, we didn't know who he was. Now, I don't want to drag the player through the dirt, this is what I mean about accessibility to the fans. No one in Nottingham knew who this guy was. He was a starter for Nottingham Forest. He now plays in the Premier League. So when I'm talking about expectations, I'm an Arsenal fan. I don't want to labour on Arsenal. Mm -hmm. But we are drawn towards, I am drawn towards players. I feel care about the club and they give us a bit back. So is it too much to expect as a fan for, um, for Forest players to, I don't know, delve into the community a bit more? Because you did. You were, you were visible around Nottingham. Yeah, well, the, I think the, it's, it's the person, is the guy from Nottingham, is he from London? I, I, I don't know who, which player it is. So it's, it, be, it, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be right, <laughs> it wouldn't be right of me to say what, how we should act. This is what I would say. When I came to Nottingham Forest and it, it didn't, it wasn't great for me at, at, at the beginning. It didn't go as planned. But one thing I wanted to do was integrate myself into the into the city because I know Nottingham is a great city. So whether things are going good on the pitch, it doesn't matter. You still have to integrate and interact with, with people. And you know what? I found, even when I was going through a difficult time at Nottingham Forest, friends used to come up to me and say, hey, listen, you need to butt your ideas up. And I said, you know yeah. what? You're right. I do need to butt. But that's the beauty of Forest fans. You know, you need to buck your ideas up. And you say, yeah, I, I do need to buck my ideas up. You're right, I do. Because one thing about the fans, the fans will tell it straight. I don't need it sugar-coated. They will tell you, if you're doing the business, fantastic. And if you're not doing good, they'll tell you you're not doing they'll good. You. And you can accept that. So not interacting and not, not wanting to be part of the, the fabric of Nottingham is only because probably the fear factor. Players fear... The fans, because fans are powerful. But when you when you come from Arsenal, a Brixton boy coming from Arsenal, interacting with the fan base is everything. Mm. And that's what really makes the fans connect with the players.
if they if they know you can connect and you could go out into the community and you're not afraid to talk to them. Good yeah. and bad. Yeah, great answer, Kevin. Great answer. Any more, Marcus, before I go? No, just thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. It's brought a smile to my face. Come on, oh, you're gonna. Kevin, nice Kevin, blood. this guy, nice. right, this Kevin, this guy is always on my neck every time, all the time. <laughs> Why? Why are you giving Mr. Door such a hard time? <laughs> Kevin, every time Arthur can see the corner, my phone's blown off. Ben, leave us alone. <laughs> know your levels. Know where you are and be humble. If be humble, you ain't get nothing back from me. I like Boris. Oh, Just me oh, and him. Yo, 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 shout out to Marcus. Yo, thank, you know, nice Marcus. one, Marcus. Yo, yo, respect yeah. for that, Marcus. Respect for that. Yeah. Peace and love, Marcus. Peace and love. Uh, right, next one. Uh, oh, I've got another one. Matthew, uh, big voice fan as well. Hello, my friends. All right, Kev. Hi, Matthew. How are you? How are you? You're well. <laughs> Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I just tuned in just now, so I want to ask you a quick one. You were just saying with Forrest how you had uh, sort of bad times. What was the difference for you? Why were the bad times and why were the good times? Because there were some really good times, and unfortunately, I'd have rather got rid of you like the bad times, and then when it came to it, you would, all the good times came, and we, we lost you, and God knows what that caused, which is my main question. Well, th well, this is, this is the, the thing, isn't it? When, and when you're going through the bad times, the fans think, you know, we can get rid of him and we'll get someone else in. But sometimes the, the just the change of manager, because if you remember, Frank Clark got sacked, mm. Stuart Pierce took over for mm. a bit, and then Dave Bassett came in. Mm. And I think that was the steady part of, of Nottingham Forest that season where he realised what he's got. He made some good additions and... I think that the, the hierarchy in the dressing room changed. Stuart Pierce was 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 such a, a big character at the club, and he left. And I think the dressing room kind of formed a different dynamic because it kind of got shared around, as opposed okay. to Piercey being the main guy. The hierarchy in the dressing room kind of changed in the dynamic. Myself, Pierre Van Oyden, Colin Cooper, Captain mm. Steve Chettle, you know. Chris Bart Williams, all the all of us guys, all of a sudden, even Scotty Gemmel had a voice. Not saying that we didn't have a voice before, but Stuart Pierce was the main man. He was the main man at the football club. And now all of a sudden, this got shared out around the club and, and, and the squad. And I think the dynamic was was more fruitful for everybody. And then what you know, you know what it's like. Once you get interesting, once you get a group moving, all of you moving in the right in the same direction, that is powerful. Obviously, you've got Steve Stone, Des Little, you know, Big Norm, Mark Crosley, all, all the guys, all of a sudden. And I'm not saying that under Stuart Pierce, it wasn't doing that, but when you've got things more shared out, there's more parity within the squad. And we, 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 it just clicked, it clicked under Dave Bassett. And then you, you saw what happened where, you know, that for it to be the last Forest team to win something and get promotion, mm. it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it really so is. It was, it was a happy changing room then, basically. I, I mean, the changing room was always good. But I mm. think for responsibility, when you look around that change room, mm, okay. there was a lot of experience in that changing room. Mm. And sometimes it takes maybe things to be shared a lot more in that change room. And, and that's what we've done. That's what happened when PSC went. Everything got shared a lot more. I think it was, it was very difficult on, on Stuart Pierce, by the way, being captain, being manager as well. And he's never going to turn it down. But I think if he, hmm. if he admitted it now, if he, if he spoke to him now, he would hmm. say it was probably a, a bit too much for him at the time because having managerial duties and player duties, that's hard graft. That's hard going. 5%, 5%. And, and more questions, Matt? So, yeah, the other thing I wanted to ask is when you left, do you regret it now? And what? how much was it a push and how much was it uh, a pull and you actually wanted to go to Turkey? No, I, I we just got promotion. We we were rubbing yeah, our hands. So you didn't want to go? We were, we, of course I didn't. Mm. We were rubbing our hands thinking, bring the Premier League on. We couldn't wait to get stuck into some of them Premier League teams after what had happened to us the you know a couple of seasons previous. I was looking forward to it. I was mm. preparing. We were preparing to go on on um, 
on tour abroad. My contract mm. for two weeks. They said, you're getting a new contract. Ari Bassett told me I'm getting a new contract. I said, I'm more than happy to sign a new contract. Mm. I went in. I went in seven times into the office. Contract not ready. Contract not ready. Wow. And I'm like, so I rang Harry. I said, Harry, I've, you told me last week to keep going in. I've got in and no contracts ready. He said, leave it with me. Got to the got to the Friday or the Saturday, and I got told uh, the club have accepted a bid, and you're not going on tour, and they think it's in the best interest of of of, of Kevin Campbell to to leave. That was it. So if the club's pushing you out, <laughs> what, what terrible. can you do? Wow. It was, it was go. terrible. No, you got to go. It was terrible. No, because that was one of the. For for me, it was one of the seminal moments in Forest history. And I, we sponsored um, Pierre's shirt. So yeah. I, I would be in the Robin Hood sometimes and you'd right. be on the other table. And yeah. everything was going in the right direction. And then, of course, what happened when you left caused mayhem. Uh, did you feel kind of, did you ever speak to Pierre afterwards and say, look, I, I, I'm flattered, mate, but go on, just go and play or anything like this. Afterwards, I hadn't even <laughs> yeah. signed in Turkey. I was, I, was just a, listen, I was just about getting on the plane and Pierre rang me. Right. And he said, tell me it's not true. I said, mm. so I said, Pierre, listen, I can't talk now. I'm just getting on a plane. <laughs> I'll call you when I land in Istanbul. And it, you can imagine it's steam were coming out of his ears. So I landed in Istanbul. I gave him a call. So I said, Pierre, what's up? So he said, don't, is it true? I said, well, I, I told him what had happened. Been in seven times for a new contract, nothing. Da, 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 da. Now I've been told they've accepted a bid. It's in my best interest to leave. And um, so I said, I'm going to find out. I says, I'm, I've come over to see what's going on. So we said, if you go, I ain't going back. He said, this is ridiculous. How are they going to split up our partnership? And he felt that strongly about it. And I thought, Peter, you just, it's just anger. But no, it wasn't. And yeah, I, you I, never, I was you in never touch thought, with him. You, you never thought it'd go through with it at all. Like, no, like, I didn't. What, what blew up from it. And, and then and when it blew it up. quick, which is interesting. Well, when, and, when it, and when it actually happened, obviously I would, Called Pierre and I said, Pierre, come on, you got to stay. He says, Kev, he says, I'm disgusted. How could they split us up? Because the dynamic's going to change. Mm -hmm. He was thinking of the dynamic of the dressing mm -hmm. room because everybody got on so well, mm -hmm. but he knew I got on with everybody. And I, I, again, that partnership, someone you can rely on. He knew he could rely on me. I knew I could rely on him. And when you've got a, when you've got a front two who could score goals, and their premiership proven. Not in the forest going in the premiership. Yeah. You know, holds no fears for the club. Yeah. Everybody played in the premiership. So we we were ready. But well, the you know, partnership was was really good then. You were, you were on fire, weren't you? It was gonna yeah. be maybe the new Collymore and Roy kind of thing. And it just yeah. never happened. Two and a half never. million quid. Peanuts. Never allowed. Never allowed Peanuts. to happen. It, was, it was never allowed us, to happen. And it was bad, and it was bad for you. It was bad. It? And listen, it was level, it was it, it was no bad. Favors. It was bad for all of us. It was bad for everyone, yeah. all of us yeah. who's involved. Because 100%. when you've got a, when you've got a, a, a team like that, you didn't need many additions because everyone played in the Premier League. Everyone knew what the Premier League was. So you 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 add one or two to the squad, but you didn't need wholesale changes. Mm. You're ready made. You're ready to go. So. It, obviously, it was a new owners, wasn't it? And Irving yeah. Scholar was part Irving of Scholar. that, and you know, it was it was a shambles in the end. It's a shame because we've had these partnerships, even up to Antonio and the Sombolonga and stuff, and they never seem to come to fruition. We kind of get them, we prove them one season, and they always get broken up. It's kind yeah. of like I don't know your Christmas presents under the tree, and then you wake up and they're gone. Come they're they're not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Man. It, yeah, it, it's, oh, just it's just sad. I'd, I'd, it sad. I'd love to have seen it happen, but never mind. Can I ask you one little quick follow-up? One more question, Where does the number six play on a football pitch? That's what I want to know. Where does the number six <laughs> oh, play? Oh, I don't... Um... A, a number six could play, <laughs> could play in the centre of the pitch or at the back. <laughs> yeah, but it's number six in the good old Yeah, days. number six, don't forget, number six used to be centre-halves. <laughs> 
<laughs> he was exactly correct. Yeah, answer. number five okay, and number six were centre halves. Six, correct. <laughs> and number seven and number eight play with the number four holding right in the midfield. Court <laughs> or seven was Near wide. Enough. Seven was wide. Or yeah, seven could yeah, play okay. striker. Hey, listen, don't get me going on these numbers. <laughs> no, because I know. I've Kenny played, I've, no, I know, I've, I know. Exactly. I've played virtually <laughs> every one of the six. So. <laughs> no, I just um, have to clarify it because I'm a number I've been a number six all my life. So I, I actually signed my name with a number six. Right. And, uh, I had someone telling me that number six is a box to box midfielder today. Oh, I was like, not really. No. They but, must you know. be they must be very young. <laughs> they must be young. So they've got to be young. I'm glad you that's what I said. Well, that's it. That's true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm yeah. glad you backed me up on this one. Thanks, Kevin. You're a gentleman. No problem. No problem. Che cheers, Matt. Thank appreciate you very much, Matt. Take Peace me love. out of here. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, dude. Love. Right. Um, I've got next one. Lennon, if he's on. Um, last. Lennon. <laughs> Lennon. Hey. Yo. What's happening? What are you saying? Yes, Kevin Campbell. <laughs> What's he yes, saying? Yes, Lennon. What's up, man? Hey, I've got a question for you. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask it quickly. If you could see um, this, obviously, you've been, I don't know if you've been following Forest for the past few seasons. Yeah. But what's one thing that you would change? Um, about Forest, I'd say. I'd say this season. Or what? What do you think we could do better to? To kind of aim for that top top six because I feel like that's what we want every season. But there's always that, you know, it's like when we had Lemuzi and stuff. It kind of mm -hmm. we just slipped out of the playoff zone in the in the last few games. Well, the last what, game wasn't it? It was the last game yeah. that cost you. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm not in a Forest team who are free scoring. You have a great chance. Yeah, and and um, me and Mister Dor mentioned this before. You've got to get your strikers. Because there's times where Taylor's going to play, there's times where Graben's going to play. Those yeah. guys have to be scoring regularly. Whoever plays oh, yeah. up there have to be scoring regularly. And uh, obviously, Johnson is going to be a big key to that. Cavalier got a couple of goals last night. Good player. Although he kind of divides the fan base a little bit, Cavalier, doesn't he? You know, some some like him, some not too sure. Yeah. He frust Kevin, he frustrates me. He frustrates yeah. me a lot. Because he has quality. But yeah, he has. It's the... Con the, the problem in that division is consistency. The teams yeah. who perform consistently end up up there. And, you know, you, in the championship, losses do come. But it's the consistency of the strikers that carry you to the promised land. So if Graben and Taylor can stay fit and keep scoring goals, not enough for us to well in with a chance to, to, to get to top six. 100%, man, 100%. No, it's an honour speaking to you, man, honestly. like, um, Obviously, I didn't get really get to see uh, you, you play because uh, I'm 19 years of age. So, like, right. you know, but obviously hearing about you, you're a legend, didn't it, in, in football, you know what I mean? So it's kind of an honour kind of speaking to you right now. And Ben, I appreciate you getting me on. But just to follow up on that, that last question that Matt asked. Basically, <laughs> number six, right? I used to play for Notts County. I was a number six, but I played in the centre mid role and I was a deep centre mid. But because mm -hmm. I've got quite a lot of energy, I was back and forth. Mm -hmm. Now, in today's football, I had a debate with him saying that the number oh, six. Oh, so it's you. All right. <laughs> it's All right. It's you. I get it now. I get it. Go on. So so basically, he, he we were just discussing like a number 10. He thought a number 10 was a striker. I said a number 10 is behind the striker. Play, you know, pulls the strings, makes everything happen. But hey, it's a bit childish, isn't it? But you know, no, it. no. But you know what? It's 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 a fair debate. And here's the thing: you're both right. You're both right. Yeah. But because don't forget, before you were born, number sixes used to be centre back. Centre back. Yeah. Centre -back. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't know that, do you? No. You don't know. So you. You're right when you say number six is a midfielder or, you know, a box-to-box a, a -box midfielder. Number six could either be holding or number six could be box-to-box. -box. It's, yeah. it's, it's one of the midfielders is the number six nowadays. So you're both right. Yeah. He's, both just right. Got, see, he's just there, got his see, team. There side. it is. There is Lennon and Mac. There, you're both right. Don't want to argue, mate. So don't let him tell you you're wrong. Don't let him tell you you're wrong. I hate this. Well, anyway, yeah. guys, I, I'm going to go. Um, but 
Ben, am I right to just say a quick thing on, on, on here whilst I'm here? Yeah, um, feel free. Yeah, today, four, four till seven o'clock, I'm on Kemet FM, um, telling people about my music and stuff coming out soon. I'm on Kemet, so tune in, please. It'll mean the world. Four till oh, seven. Respect, um, respect you'll hear about me there. Kevin Campbell. Um, nice one. Cheers, man. I appreciate it. Uh, God ben, bless you. Nice one. Ben, ben, I'll see you Saturday. Yeah? My G. Right, peace and love, bro. Peace and <laughs> love, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he's an, he's an, oh, Kevin, these, these young generation, right? This is this, right? This is the topic, and he's talking about Kevin. Like, Leonard, he's a young lad. Mm -hmm. Matthew's an old lad, like myself, I'm an old lad. And I think with the, the young generation, like, this, they've not seen Forrest got promoted since you, yourself. Mm. How do you, like, it's not, it's not with Forrest, I think we're like with Arsenal as well. Do you feel for the younger generation, like, like now we're in the social media platforms, they can, they've got, feel, they feel free to say what they want. Do you understand why the young generation gets so much frustration, like they're not done nothing? Yes, I do. But you know what, Mr. Dor? This is where yourself and Matthews, the Matthews of this world, and I know there's a... The, the, hey, listen, you got the, the A block, you got all of the people yeah. who go, right? Who have been there, seen it, done it, season after season. Yeah. There's a, There's a knowledge transfer that has to happen to these youngsters. And and you know what? The great thing about it is it's not just you telling the stories. They have to do the research and go on YouTube and check out all the old players that used to play and know the history of, of Nottingham Forest because everything's yeah. visual now. Yeah. You can go and watch it and, and, and <clears throat> understand it. You know, might even see a young Mr. Dawes standing up there. You know what I mean? <laughs> do see that! <laughs> no, but you, you, you never... Here's the thing. You were their age once. Yeah. And to have to have glory, Mr. Dor, is important yeah. because it 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 galvanizes you as a fan. Yeah. When you have glory. When you see no glory, it's it's easy to just be like frustrated. It never happens for us. It never happens. so when it comes, when success comes, you gotta make sure you enjoy it so so yeah. much. 100%. Because it's not given. 100%. 100%, Kev. Right, um, just two more questions. I know, I, I know you, you, like Kevin, he's, he's a busy guy. He's, he's always on Sky Sports. He's on a lot. He's on everything. But, um, and like Sam, it's just, it's just a pleasure to have Kevin Campbell yet again on my channel. Um, Kevin, I'm talking about owners. Football owners, as you know, we've got Macarakas as a football owner and he spent so much on um, Forest so more. And I think, like I said, with the young generation, they want success. Like, with owners wise, how like do they need really need to spend so much just to get for the premiership? Like last season, Mike Cash left to go to Aston Villa and we spent on 14, 14 players and it was it was a really poor season for Forest. Like and Chris Hooton, he's he's got he's, he's got so much pressure to get Forest back in. Do you think Macrakis like the pressure that he's on to get Forest promotion, do you think there's a time that oh I need to like step back a bit and don't and don't spend much. Well, here's here's the thing, Mister Dor, and I think it's a really good uh, question. You bring play every time you do the recruitment. Not everything's going to work. As fans, sometimes you know you make all these signings, you're expecting everything to go well, and when it doesn't go well, you get frustrated. But if football was that easy, you just spend money and you, you get promotion, everyone will be trying it. It just doesn't work like that because you have to have chemistry. You have to have the manager. You have to have the coaching. You've got to have the fan base. There has to be a feeling. Yeah. And the feeling, like I, I mentioned previously, when everything's moving in the right direction, everyone's on the same page, that's when you start to move as a football club. Yeah, Nottingham Forest knows what it feels like. You guys know what it feels like. Yeah, you know what it looks like, and you want it because you know what it, it will change people's lives. Mr. Yeah, let's have it right, Mister Dor. If Nottingham Forest got promotion this season, so many people's lives would change at Nottingham Forest 5%. in the fan base. Yeah. Okay. Now to get there is hard. It's hard, and everybody is trying to get to that promised land. So. Sometimes it happens in stages. Sometimes you have to, 
Any top team, you have to get the defence right. And I think when I was on before, I right. said Chris Hewton's got to get the goalkeeper and defence right. Right. Then he's got to get the midfield right, the balance between attack and defence. Because, like I mentioned against Coventry, first half, you had it right. Yeah. Second half, it kind of got started to get a little bit disjointed and you ended up sitting back. Yeah. And you it's like you're waiting for Coventry. As soon as they equalise... It's difficult for you to 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 re to re push again. Yeah. You can't do it. So Chris Hewton will be trying to work on that. There's a little bit of the window open now. Yeah. I'm sure the owner will be saying, "Look, I've spent all this money previously, Chris. If there's something you need, let me know because he <laughs> he, he wants to get. You reckon the owner spent that money for nothing? No, yeah, exactly. he wants to get to the promised land. Mm. So, you know, I'm sure if the right couple of players became available mm. and maybe experience, maybe ex a bit of experience, because it's still pretty young squad. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Need some experience in there just to guide some of the youth and exuberance because with the old heads come knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge. Yeah. Um, right. Um, we've got uh, Lee. Lee Cupburn, if not another voice from this guy's crazy. This guy's crazy. Um, well, here he goes. Lee. <laughs> Don't believe a word Ben says. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Campbell, legend. How Bro, are you, mate? You're legend. right, Lee. How are you? I'm good, thank I'm you. I'm good, good thank you. Uh, listen, I'm on Mr. Doors channel. I'm buzzing. <laughs> I'm buzzing. <laughs> Love well, this. Hi. Love it's this. A, it's a pleasure to speak to you. Nice. Do you one. still have your boots? Listen. Do you know how many people ask me that? My boots are right here. I'm ready to go. Put them on and get on on Saturday. We need you. We need you, Kevin. <laughs> need that big man in front. Uh, but do you know what? This is what I will say. Again, I think in Graben and Taylor, you've got two strikers capable of scoring regularly. Agreed. The key is supply. You have to be able to supply them. If you cannot supply them, What's the point in having the best gun with no bullets? Yeah. That's where you know I, what like I mean. Bob, it's no you? point. So, again, Taylor might play in certain games. Graben might play in certain games, depending on the opposition. But you've got to get the service into them correct. If you got the service into them, I think they you could go close. I'm telling you. I think you could. Yeah. Lee, any, any, any question for Kev, Lee? Any question for... No, just any question, Lee? Boot, it's not really got a question, just a, more of a nice to have a chat sort of thing. <laughs> just, just in the middle of my day. <laughs> oh, this uh, guy. I, I've got me, I've got a question. I've got a question for you. Go on. What's your thoughts on the season? What's your thoughts on Forest oh, right Kevin, now? Don't get oh, on. Don't no, get me. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. He's asking me. Right. Let me hear it. Come on. Go on, Lee. Get the bullet out. Go on. No, 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 no. For, for me. First off, we were good at Coventry. Second off, we sat back and defended for 45 minutes, invited pressure on. For me, mm -hmm. you've got a link, that number 10, to the striker because you've got one guy up front. OK, you've got, technically, you've got your wingers. But for me, Carvalho at number 10, I'd have Johnson on the right wing with his pace. Carvalho can be that link. You've got two defensive midfielders. Let them mop up. Don't get me wrong, track, by all means, track back. But let him be that link. In with the uh, Zinconagel last night, apparently, were brilliant. Mm. Well, you know, well, he needs someone on his wavelength. Carvalho won't really add that. It's so, so, Mr. Dodd, ju just, just so everyone could understand, do you remember we, we spoke earlier and I said, to get the balance in midfield yeah, is yeah. so important. Because first, first half against Coventry, for instance, it, it, it worked. Yeah. Second half, the moment... Coventry start having a few attacks. Everybody starts taking five, five yards, ten yards deeper. And then the, the striker's isolated. You can't get close enough because it's too big a distance. Yeah. So getting that balance is, is right. So you make a really good point there. Yeah, no, no. no. Thank you, Lee. I'll, I'll let you go, um, but because we've got, we've got, Kevin can't stay this that long. But, 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 but thank you very much, Lee. Lee. Cheers, Lee. Take good Cheers, care, mate. Peace and love, Lee. <laughs> Peace and love. Um, right. Uh, actually, two more questions, Kev. Um, right. This is a more important question, right? Like, I mentioned, we mentioned Chris Hutton, um, he, he needs to come to the forest. Like, 
if he, if he doesn't get Forest promoted this season, do you think he's under pressure? I think he's under pressure now, Mr. Door. Um, yeah, well, look, Chris Hutton knows pressure. He's handled pressure. Pressure has to. Pressure is a, a key part of the job. Mm. I, I think the I think the point you're making, if if you don't mind me saying so, is yeah. if there's it depends whether there's sufficient progress made. Because if you're not progressing how you think you should, and, and and next minute the fans start to to turn and question the manager, okay, then, then, then the writing's on... It, this is at every club. Yeah. The writing's on the wall, Mr. Dodge. Do you know what I mean? It is on the wall. So you need a, you need a team who can really go the distance. Yeah. Fine. And if you're going to get a team that can go the distance... It's a window now, and then you only have one more window in Jan. Yeah. You need the team to be able to take you up until January convincingly, and you're close. You're in at least in touching distance of, of the playoff. Mm. And then you have to kick on again. I think that's the key. Again, I think attacking-wise, I think Forrest have got talent. We have got talent. I think the, I think the problem is, like I said, I don't know if you mentioned, we mentioned... Um, Jack Ovalio, like mm. he's been at he's been at club for like nearly this is his fourth year, his last contract, yeah. and everyone there's like the young generation, like the younger generation have not seen nothing, and they yeah. see Cavalio of being a a fifteen million pound guy that's talented, but he's not he can't get the first team, and he's he like he scored two goals last night, and the the the, the, the divide of the um, fans of is he's good enough, he's he's good against Brantford. In your in your age, like it, what, what, like using using a fantastic team, care if you had mm -hmm. Ian Wright, Roe Castle, the the lot, mm -hmm. was you under pressure, like to like to, to be successful in your in your young age? Well, it's it's pressures to try and get in, Mister yeah. Door. So if you've got the pressure, you you got to remember when George Graham took over Arsenal in in eighty six, I was just starting off as a as a YTS apprentice. Yeah, yeah. So to make the first team at 18 mm. was an achievement in itself. But as soon as you get that taste, I was out on loan. Yeah. So I, for me, it was I need to play, I need to get in that first team. So the pressure is to get in. Then when you get in, Mr. Dorp, the pressure yeah. is not only to perform well, the pressure is to win. Everything has to come together. When you're yeah. at Arsenal, when you're at Nottingham Forest, it's not like a lot of other clubs where you accept these you know, defeats. You're yeah. expected to win because of the history of the football club that you, you, you're at. You're yeah. expected to win. <clears throat> Forest are expected to be up there in the championship and to get back in the premiership. That's why it's so frustrating for the fan base. So yeah. At Arsenal, you're expected to win. If you're young and you get in there, you don't yeah. get a lot of chance. <laughs> mm. You get in there, you've got to hit the ground running. There's no messing around. Mm. So, again, I think Chris Hutton, he has to consolidate, but he has to progress the football team. If mm. fans, I think if fans see the team progressing, they'll be like, we see what he's doing. We can see what he's doing. We're probably two or three players short, Mr. Door. Yeah. But as, if, you, if you could see that, then you're expecting, right, come January... If we could fill a couple of those spaces, we're going to go close. But if you're falling away, then, you know, pressure's part of the, the job. Chris mm. Hutton is a, is a capable manager. He's done. He's All done. Time. He's got promotion at teams. Yeah. But not in the forest. With what comes with it, he has to move and shake and try and get, get that balance right in midfield. I think that's the key. Mm. Right, there's one, one more question, Kev. Like, and I know this is a, this is a massive topic, and, and I, when I speak to rival fans, um, as you know, Forest have got the history, mm -hmm. and we've been in the championship for like like 24 years now. Would you say right now, Forest is it, it like we're a massive club because, like I said, we've won the, the back to back cups. You know, as you know, we won the league in 1998 season. Would you say we're a big club now? That's yeah. the main. That's the biggest topic that I want to know, Mister Daw. Here, here's the thing. History never is never. erased. Yeah, it's but... never erased. Hmm. 
what Nottingham Forest has achieved as a football club has been miraculous. Yeah. Let's let's be honest. It's been miraculous what they've mm. achieved as a football club. The last 24 or so years, it hasn't gone how everybody anticipated. Yeah. But trust me, that happens. Winning things is hard. Hard. Big time. It is Big time. hard to win. Kevin, I've and suffered. I've suffered. I've yeah. suffered so much. And, you know, the sleepless night where you go to bed and you, the match is the next day. <laughs> yeah. And you're expecting Forrest to turn up and you go to the game and they don't produce the goods. And it's like yes. the frustration. Listen, I know it. I've been a fan. I know all about all yeah, that. Yeah, 100%. But, but here's the thing. The history of the football club. Not in the Forest is a big club. Mm. Big club. Big in the Midlands, big club. Big club. So you don't, you, for me, you don't turn your nose up. If, you, if you're mentioning clubs in the Midlands, the two biggest clubs you're going to mention, obviously, are Aston Villa and Not in the Forest. Forest. Yeah, or, or not in the forest and Aston Villa. Yeah, it's either or they're the clubs there, and then you start filtering it down because five, five percent. London's a certain London's a certain standard, the Midlands a certain standard, and North Manchester area, North Northwest, and then obviously you probably got your Newcastle in the northeast with the Sunderland big clubs, but not in the forest. Prestige and pedigree is never challenged, 5%. never. Right, uh, Kevin, it's been a legend. It's been it's been an absolutely a pleasure, Kevin, for coming on my channel. And I like honestly, I want to thank everyone else for coming on my channel. But Mr. This man... oh, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Hold okay. on. I've, got, I, I've got to ask you a question. Come on, give it me, give it me, Kev, give it me. What's your thoughts on what you need as a squad right now, and where do you think this team will finish? Right, Kevin, I, I've spoke to I know it's team. a hard question, but I, I've got loaded questions all day, so I'm loaded one to <laughs> Give you. Give it there. Right, <laughs> Kevin, I'm like, like I said, I spoke to loads of Forest fans, and the problem is, like, Kevin, like, last, last 22, three years, right, I, I'm always positive. Yeah. And as you mentioned, that, that Stoke game, that literally it killed, killed me. Yeah. That, it literally killed me. It drained me out. And when you're positive like this, I'm thinking, oh, it's our year. It's our year. We're going up. Blah, blah blah, this and that, and himself. And this season, like I said, we, last season we spent, we brought in fourteen players, fourteen players, and it's been a disaster. And we like when Christian, when Christian Hutton come in, I thought, of yes, he's the man. He's the man to get us up. He's done it with Brighton. He's done it with Newcastle, and he almost done it with Birmingham, and he's done it with Norwich. He's a man, but. This season, Kevin, I'm I'm like I'm not gonna be like, yes, we're gonna do it. Your expectation levels dropped, you mean? It's dropped so much. And when I mentioned like like the teams like when, when it comes to money, parachute money, like you got teams like um is it West Brom, Fulham, the team, they're spending big and we're not spending money. And the players that I think we keep saying we need, we need to bring players in, we need to bring players in. I think we need to bring at least two or three players, players in mm -hmm. to stay away from the relegation zone, Kevin. Because right. the, that commentary came, like, like I went to the game, was like was fantastic first half. And I, like, I, I, like, I, love, I love Chris Hutton, I like him. Mm -hmm. But of what he did, like he sat back, I think he just wanted to win 1-0. And it backfired. And when you got players like Lyle Taylor, he scored a good goal. Hmm. And grab loose grabbing, he's injured. We haven't got that plan B. And that's and this is where the problem is. Like this travel window is almost done. It's almost done now. And we've got to be careful of the FFP because we can't be spending yeah. a 10 yeah. million on a striker to get out of this league. Because you know, Kevin, this league's so hard. Yeah, and we've tough. not done it for for 20, 23 years now. So it is difficult for me to think, oh, we're gonna win, we're gonna get playoffs or get top two. It's not, it's not easy. So Kevin, my question is, <laughs> I'd, no, I, I, I personally, right now, we're not, we're definitely not top 16 side. It's going right. to be, it's going to be, a, it's like, let's today, like we played against Bradford and we played a young side and we've got some fantastic young players. Yeah. But 
I, I just don't think we're, we're not we're ready for not. the championship. Do you know what I mean? Some of them youngsters w will develop, and and that's why I said you've got to allow them time to develop. Yeah. In the 23s and then Spain really starting to come through in the first. It's going to take a year to 18 months. Mm. All these new players. Because you know what, Mr. Dor? 20 odd years you've waited. Yeah. It's, 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 it's it gets long. more frustrating every year. And then you, you think about it. A new manager comes in. All of a sudden, it's not a magic wand where he touches the team and all of a sudden they, they're going to make it. It yeah. doesn't work like that. All exactly. of a sudden, you've got to look at it and say, right, root and branch. What do we need? Mm. And if the playing staff are not good enough, because you're always going to be competing against the teams who come down. Yeah, 5%. And, it's, and, it's, and you've got, you got some good teams in the championship as it is who are strengthening again. Yeah. So the battle is on. Do you know it what I mean? It is on. Like I said, like you mentioned, like, like I'm going to mention, like, you know, where like Matt Cash left last season and Brendan Johnson. Fantastic against Comet City, and he's been linked. He's been linked. Yeah, he hasn't signed a contract yet, and um, he could be going soon. So the problem is, I think with Forest, like we've got players like Joe Worrell, fantastic defender, leader. He's been possibly he could go. Johnson, he could go. Alex Mitchum, fantastic player. He he, he played all right yesterday against um, Bradford. Mm -hmm. we, we, it's always one season that a good player's going to leave. So I think uh, we're spending getting rid of a young star. Again, big money, we're bringing dead one like Harry Arter, mm -hmm. fantastic player. Yeah, look at look at his, look at his level, and he can't get in the Forest team now because of, because of the actions that he'd done. And it, I'm, 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 that's why I came. I'm, I'm trying, I'm, try, I'm trying to be net positive, but I can't. No, but you, uh, what you uh, for, do you know what I hear from you, Mr. Door? You're being real, you're just telling it how it is. Yeah, so. You still can have a bit of positivity if results show you that. Yeah. But you saw Forrest go back to the old ways in the second half against Coventry. Yeah. yeah. Great that the youngsters got a win at, at the city ground last night. Yeah. Fantastic. Amazing feeling. Amazing feeling. You know, you, you got a spring in your step today, <laughs> which is nice. Yeah. And then, you know, you're going back to the, to the grind of the championship where the championship is a tough league. Yeah. It's a tough league. It's I'll tell you what, the championship's tougher than the Premier League. Yeah, but can, but the, the championship, you know, you know when everyone, I don't know if you hear this, Kevin, you know when you hear the championship is one, it's one of the best leagues in the world. No, Kevin, it's it's, it's one of the, it's one of the most oh I hate the league. I hate it. <laughs> it's, you hear about oh I don't want to get promoted. No, no, I don't want to be in the championship no more. I want to be in the premiership. Yeah, that's where it's at. That's yeah, where, that's it's, where at. it's at. That's where the money's at. Um you hear oh I hear so much Forest fans. No, I don't want to get promoted. That's right. There's other word, Kevin. You might know what it's right. When you hear the word like transition, like I hear it every season. Like I speak to my Forest fans. Oh, we need a season of transition. No, I don't want to hear transition because if you hear Arsenal, like oh, with Arteta, you need transition. No. I, yeah, I, but here's the thing, Mister Door. Transition's all right, but what are you transitioning into? You understand? Yeah. Saying just saying transition is one thing. Okay, we're transitioning, but what are we transitioning into? Exactly. exactly. We've got to transition into a competitive team that mm. can challenge because no one has a divine right of being successful. Yeah. But when you're when you've got the names and the pedigree that our clubs have got, you want them to transition into compete. Because yeah. you know what? If you're in and around the playoffs, that means you're competing. Because you're yeah. going into games and you're excited. Yeah, exactly. Being in, in and around the top four, top six, Arsenal, right. We know we've got a competitive team. Languishing at 12, 15, <laughs> no. no. Even for the, we're, we're both we're, we're both having a bad season if that's going on, Mr. Dawson. <laughs> it just, I mean, it just, you know, that's what Chris was going to ask you. It's just, it's just frustrating me. Like, it's been, it's been like going back to Sitcon last night. It was just an amazing feeling, amazing feeling. And like it's, it's, it's been 18 months. And yeah. I, was, I was speaking to loads of Forest fans as well. And they're saying to me, Ben, just the door. It's our season. And I'm, I've got, like, I've, I've, I can't, like, I can't hold, I've got to hold back. I'm like, no, it's not our season. Because I've got well, to like, Even if you don't think it is, you want to be, you, you'd like to be surprised by the team. 
that's allowed because you know what? After watching it on TV and watching it virtually and all that kind of thing, Mr. Dor, it's hard to just put it out there because you know what? If every year you do it and you get slapped in the face, 20 odd slaps in the face, you've had enough now. You know yeah. what I mean? You've had enough. <laughs> I've, kept, I've had enough too much. After Stuka, I think I, I, I had enough. I had enough, but I'm still going to spot my club on the club everywhere and all that. Um, Last question, Kevin. I, I'm someone messages, messages me, right? What, like, you used the 97 98 season, the, one of the best teams that Forest has played. What was your best, like, s like time at Forest? Like, what was the best time? Well, it was it was it was that time. I mean, you know what? There's one thing I will say. Mm. The dressing room, everybody got along. Mm. And that goes a long way in a hard season. Because you look around you and, and you know when you're in the dressing room and, and you, before the game. You know, I look, I look beside me, Pierre van Oudonk's there. You know, I, I look, Mark Crosley's there. Yeah, There's Little, mm -hmm. you know, Alan Rogers, Chets, Coops, you know, Woney, Stoney, oh, Mark legends. Williams. Legends. You know, you, you, you got Jeff Thomas there. You got Al, uh, Alan, uh, Andy Johnson. Andy Johnson. Got, oh, he's a nutcase. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but you've got, you've got every facet in the squad that you need throughout a campaign. You've got John Elder, you've got Thierry Bonalaire, you, yeah. you know, you've got every facet in the, in the squad and you're thinking to yourself, do you know what? We're strong, man. Mm. We're strong. That's what you don't, if you, if you had that in your head, you knew that was the case, you'd be, you'd be positive, but you yeah. know, they're not quite right. And that's why I asked the question, what, who, what positions would you recruit for? Because obviously it's not quite right yet. As you said, probably midfield is a key spot. Yeah, it's, it's a must spot. Like, I think we've been linked with James Gardner. He, was, he, he, he came last season at Forest from Manchester United and mm -hmm. been linked with him, but there's been so much clubs after him. So I think the problem is like the midfield is a problem. Everyone, like we mentioned that Joe Carvalho, he played great against Bradford. A League Two side, but it's a championship. He needs yeah. to perform because one game he'll play good, and then the next four games you don't see you don't him. See him, yeah. You don't yeah. see him, and I think consistency, yeah, consistency. And he hasn't got it. Like he went on loan to a Spanish club. With, um, um, is it Almera? Almera. 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 Yeah, Kevin. He didn't do nothing. Hmm. He didn't do absolutely nothing. No, like no goals, two assists, and he plays at number ten. And Forest fans think him. He's coming back. He's going to come back to the season. Chris Hutton's never seen him. And do you think he's going to do a, a chance in this in this tough league? Here's it, what I will say. Here's what I will say, Mister Dor. He took his goals really well, and I know it's only it Bradford. I know it's only Bradford. Yeah, but he took his goals really well. Mm. He's he's got something. He's got something that, that can. He's got some quality that can help Forest. So the key now is. How does Chris Hewton use him to help? It might be for 25 minutes coming off the bench yeah. when people are tired. If that's the case... Kevin, that's, that's him. That's the case, you know what like, I mean? Like, Kevin, I had an argument about Carvalho. Like, you know where he plays good when there's no... Like, Forrest could be 1-0 or 2-0 up. Bring him on. And then that's, there's no pressure on him. And he plays a fantastic game. I think... That, it's, it's, it's divided. If you was it, Kevin, if you was in that group, that forest group, just me, you'd be like, what, what, what's, what, Cavalio this, Cavalio that. Yeah. Me as Cavalio, he's a frustrating player, but he's got that. He's got quality, hasn't he? He's got quality. He's got, quality. He's got so much quality. And it's, it's divided opinion on everyone, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's I, I, I try to be, I try to be positive, Kev. I'm trying to be positive, but it's just well, be it's... positive, Mister Dor. The season's <laughs> just begun. You've only two games in. You've lost one. You've won one, and there's another game coming up, my man. Yeah, but then, then we, we've got um, Bournemouth. We've got Bournemouth at home. Another tough game, Kev. Yeah, but listen, they're beatable. Trust me, Boom. 
You know what this league is, Mr. Dor. Yeah. You know what this league is. Listen, on the day, anyone could be anyone in that championship. Yeah. 100%. Kevin, it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. This man's a legend. As a, as the, 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 the older generation will know this man. Like, you know what? There's one thing I told you. I spoke to you, like, the le- Chris Bott Williams. Yeah. The dance move that you lot done. <laughs> <laughs> he said, this is what he said. He said it was you. He said it was you that stopped all the dance moves in. Not going to center and all that, but... <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's yeah, he will say that, would he? Now we <laughs> look. We, we again. It's that that connectivity of the team and the squad together. Everyone, different cultures, you know, from different places, but we all came together and we yeah. felt so comfortable in in the city. You know, a lot of the times you can go out and you could see the players out, and the players will talk to to any fan. So. It was it was brilliant time, really brilliant time. I, I I love my time, and I can't wait to get back down. Kevin, come back down. All the Forest fans want you down. Like, yeah, I can't wait to come there. Come there, definitely. Quick, quick, quick question: Like, what regarding your son? Is he still at Stoke, or is he yeah. still, he's still injured? No, he was injured. Remember, he was injured, but he's he's uh, he's probably about a, a month away. He's just got to get. Oh. He's just got to train. He's just got a train now, so he's done all the he's, he's done all the leg work. He's done all the yeah. bits and pieces. Yeah, he feels yeah. great. He's just got to get into training and all that kind of thing. And they, yeah, they've yeah. started pretty well, which, yeah, is, which is good. We've got him soon. That's what I was asking him. We've first got Stoke, I think, in two weeks' time. And I thought, yeah. oh, he's, he's fit. And he might be there, but... If, yeah, if, I, if I don't to... think he'll play in that game. Nah, he won't I play. think it might be a little bit too soon, but I think within a month, he will start... He'll be he'll be on the verge of coming back in. Right, so I do do, okay. If, when, if he's fully fit, right, if he's fully fit, well, I don't know when Stoke have got Forest at the thing on. You've got to come down. You've got to come down, Kev. Because I thought Forest, Forest, Forest. Well, I've been. Well, here's the great thing about about <laughs> me. When Stoke played um, Forest in the cup last season, you remember in the cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Oh, was two seasons ago. Sorry, yeah, two, two seasons ago. Yeah, two or whatever. Seasons ago, yeah. I, I, I came down, I could walk go. in between fans, I could do everything, just had my hat on, you know what I mean? Just my scarf on. I just mingled with everybody. It was brilliant. Right. It was brilliant. But right, I know people. if I link up with you, it's going to be like, I no. can't do that. Right, like, listen, because Kevin, like, uh, the, the, when you when I had a chat with you over time, Kevin, everyone keeps asking. Everyone, right, everyone's asking, where's Kev? Can I get Kev on? I mean, Kev, ask Kevin yourself. I'm not no go between me and Kev. Like, <laughs> listen to me, this guy. When you see Kevin at Seek, man, he's coming soon. But this guy's a legend in my eyes, and it's been like it's, all, it's always a pleasure, Kev, to call no, my channel. Pleasure. And like I think everyone's everyone's like come on in here. Um, it's loves you, Kev, and this guy's always on Sky Sports. And as well, this last one before you go, Kev. Kevin's on a it's an Arsenal hybrid squad as well. Mm. Um, talk about it, Kev. Yeah, it's it's uh. It's a it's a it's a fan channel called a Highbury Squad, and uh, it's run by Sophie Nicolau, who's an absolutely brilliant host. Legend, legend. I I, I come on from time to time. I'm on most of the time, yeah. but this season there's going to be a lot of different shows on. Um, we we get different characters on, and you know there's even going to be a, a a women's football thing on their show. So check it out. It's really good. Yes, You've check got it people, out and, and, and watch come. regardless. Come and come and see me. Usually <laughs> on a Friday, as Kev says, but Arsenal are playing tomorrow. So yeah. I put questions out there and fans could come in and, and we all chop it up and we all have a good fun. Oh, I, like I, watch, I watch it all the time, people. So, yeah, it's been, I'm just sat there where well, I watch Kevin and Sophie, but it's, no, it's no. legend. But Kev, it's been, a, it's been a legend. And Kevin's on Sky, you're on Sky Sports later on, aren't you, Kev? Uh, Sky Sports later on, yeah. I've got a, uh, I'm doing an interview on Sky Sports, I think around 7.30. So people you, you check get it to out. see me a little bit later. I'm watching that. I'm, in, I'm in got... as well. I'm <laughs> Dickie Dickie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yo, Kevin, you've got to pre-warm me. I couldn't wear, I couldn't wear my no, tie. No, no, it's Dicky Bow Thursday. So every Thursday is a Dicky Bow Thursday. I, I, I don't wear it all day. If Let's let's just say I finish, I finish work around 3 o'clock. Yeah, 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 and then I had nothing to do to the evening. And I won't keep the dicky bar, and I'll change. I'll I'll change into something more comfortable. Yeah, but yeah, today yeah, yeah. I've got back to back to back to back to back to back. So I'm going to be in the dicky bar all day. So, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, it's been an absolute pleasure, people. If you do like this, just comment, please hit the like button, subscribe if you new. Know. But Kevin, it's been an absolutely pleasure, and hopefully I'll see you back to you on this channel. No, I'm I, no, no. You don't. Hopefully, 
I'm definitely <laughs> coming back on this channel because hey, I think we, we I think we need to do about three or four season. So start Christmas, yes, New Year, and then Five. end. Five percent. How about that? So you Five heard it percent. here first. Right, you he don't me, get you... me on. It's him, not me. It's, it's Mr. Door. I, I apologize. You heard it at first. I, I will keep my word. I'm going to write down what Kevin says because I don't want people going for my neck. Like, like <laughs> everyone, everyone keeps saying to Kevin, like that interview done was, was amazing. Like as Des, Des, Des said, like the talk we talk, it's just it's yeah. just a normal conversation. And so mm. we love football. Um, and and this is and this is an important thing. But people, Kevin, it's been a pleasure. I will definitely, definitely coming on. See where Forest are. I might have a bigger smile on my face. I hope so. I... Christmas time, around Christmas time, <laughs> December time. Let's let's see where Forest are. We could yeah, chop but, it up, Kevin. But when it goes around December, you know, as as you know, Forest always get rid of the managers. So hopefully, listen. Hopefully, hopefully they have some stability. stability. And because it's listen, one thing we do know, it's all results driven. And then yes. Forest are getting the results. Chris Hutton, it will be in the job. I think he deserves that. 100%. 100%. But yeah, people, I let it go. I'm Kevin. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Dort, take good care. Peace and love. Peace and love.